I noticed two things. One is that there is no League of Legends Pro League iconography overlay, and the second is that this video is not remotely about the League of Legends Pro League teams. So this is going to be my first non-LPL related video, which is why I don't really have an overlay. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I noticed some sentiments floating around Reddit about analytical League of Legends content creation, and this isn't, this isn't going to be some big Kelsey versus Reddit thing, which Thorin has full domain on all versus reddit type videos so far as, as far as i can tell um, the ones that have been successful at least so instead i'm going to talk about this idea that i've seen floating around um, some reasons why i think that it is kind of damaging in general St using statistics in league of legends content creation and how we do it and some of the the issues with it overall so, originally I made this video a few weeks ago when I made the EU versus North America, uh, looking at and understanding the meta, is EU really not worth watching, that type of debate, and when I finished the video it ended up being all about like frustrations with some of the response to that article, and I didn't want it to be about that at all. <laughs> this is not about that, so I decided to kind of scrap the video at that point and to remake it now, um, and make it much more about uh, the, the argument that I saw that wasn't just directed at me, but directed at a bunch of different analytical content creators and talk about, um, and make this video fully about that sentiment. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. And the argument that I saw was this idea that it's clear such and such content creator comes up with an idea and then looks for the evidence for it. Now... Right away, this sounds to me like hypothesis testing, but that, that's not what they mean. They mean something else like confirmation bias. And the difference between hypothesis testing and confirmation bias is hypothesis testing is the thing that we learn in school, which is where we come up with this hypothesis or this idea about something and how it works, and then we test it and we find out if we're right or wrong. Whereas confirmation bias is you come up with this idea or this hypothesis about how something works, and then you test it and you ignore results that prove you wrong, and you, you just use the results that seem to suggest that you're right or the evidence that supports that you're right. Um, so for example, I'm gonna use a very, very basic example in the League of Legends community just to make it extremely clear. Let's say I notice a game where um, Cloud9 pick Cassiopeia on red side as last pick. And then I say, oh, you know, I think Jensen always plays Cassiopeia on red side when he takes last pick. And I remember him doing it maybe in a previous game. So I look at the match histories and someone who's doing confirmation bias might say, oh, there it is. There's the game that I saw and there's the game that I remembered. So obviously he always puts Cassiopeia on red side. Where someone who's doing hypothesis testing says, oh, okay, there's one where he red side last picked a different champion than Cassiopeia. So obviously I'm wrong. He doesn't always last side red pick kick Cassiopeia. It's a very basic example, but you understand what I'm, what I'm suggesting now. Uh, first of all, when we're talking about League of Legends analytical content creation, it's really, really hard to flat out disprove a hypothesis with data. A lot of the, the hypotheses that people come up with are stuff that is extremely subjective, like this player is better than this player. First of all, not everyone even agrees on what makes a player better, so it's, it's very suspect to kind of think that data itself can completely prove you right or wrong. Data can just support your argument, so that's, that's something that uh, I think needs to be first of all addressed and why people are talking about this confirmation bias thing when I really don't even think it has much of a place because unless you just have this ridiculous amount of evidence that okay player that you're saying is really good just dies all the time. He has absolutely no game impact whatsoever. He does absolutely nothing. You watch his games. He does absolutely nothing. Even then, you have to actually watch the games themselves, I think, is, is the big issue to try to prove that you're, you're not making any sense or that your argument is wrong. You have to, to physically look in the games. And there are a few reasons for that, and the big one is just the lack of rigor in general in statistics and analytical content creation. And what I mean by lack of rigor is you don't have necessarily a lot of statistical tests for what you're doing, and 
you don't have a lot of data available. And this is not a knock against people like League of Legends Analytics, the new website that came out, Oracle's Elixir, Tim Seven Hewison, I probably just completely butchered his name, and uh, Rangold River, who runs the esports wikis, people like them. This is not a knock against them at all. There are a lot of reasons for this. There are things like uh, the game client not having a good spectator from which we can just directly rip data from the game replays themselves. We have to actually take a lot of the data from the VODs, which is very subjective, or rely on the backend data, which is not at all com that League of Legends match histories provide, which is not at all complete. So there's just not a good amount of thorough availability of data. There's also frequent patch changing, so that affects a lot of the data because the game can completely change every two weeks. So you don't have a very robust data set if you're talking about one particular player or one particular team or anything like this. And the biggest one is just the emphasis on timeliness and entertainment value in the League of Legends content community because a lot of League of Legends analysts also double as journalists or personalities. And when you toe this line, there's a lot of emphasis to get the content out that's timely. For example, people are arguing, you know, who is better, uh, Jensen versus Bjergsen at one particular time. You want to be able to get your article out on why you think Bjergsen is secretly or Jensen is secretly the best mid laner in North America right away while the topic is still relevant, while people are still discussing it, which means you can't spend months or whatever doing this, and by then maybe Bjergsen has already retired. Bjergsen is not retiring as far as I know, but this is an example of something that can happen, that can completely render your argument invalid, or if you're using data from two months ago and like the patches have changed and they're no longer playing the champions that you were talking about, and all these other factors that you consider. I've seen a lot of like semi-rigorous uh, analytical articles, but they don't gain a lot of traction just because they're full with a lot of jargon. And even then, they lack some like really, really robust statistical tests and things like this. It, 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 people just don't like them, and they're not going to be as successful. So there are a lot of reasons why there isn't a lot of rigor in analytical content creation. So this means that this is another reason why it's extremely hard to just flat out disprove a claim based on data. We don't have necessarily the instruments or the data arguments, and I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, right? Because as long as you understand that League of Legends analytical content there is there to support an idea, to look at something that is observed in game and say, oh look, we have some statistical evidence to back this up. There's some statistical evidence that maybe doesn't support our claim. And we can talk about and we can reason that part with our own persuasive argument. We can address that to an extent as well. As long as you're addressing both sides, I think this is totally fine. Um, and if you're confined to space, because again, people don't like to read a whole lot, <laughs> You can address, people might address the arguments that destabilize their claim a little bit less and not mention them as much. Maybe they have done the work and they've looked at them and they've reasoned these arguments well, but they don't present them in the article because of space concerns, because of things like this. But if you uh, talk to them or address these concerns, they might respond to you. The content creator might respond to you and say, yes, yes, like I noticed this as well. And my reason as to why this doesn't necessarily impinge or hurt my argument is this is x and y and z these these things happen all the time i think so i think that that's a big factor into why people consider like this confirmation bias thing if you don't agree with something and you're just like throwing confirmation bias at someone then i mean they can they can they can defend their arguments and say why they think the evidence if you even present the evidence uh, doesn't necessarily hurt their argument. I think the big thing to get from this is how important it is to use the game itself. Very few content creators I know will come up with a, a point just by looking specifically at the data. Some people might say, oh, really interesting, Power of Evil does a ridiculously high percentage of team damage. He does a ridiculously high damage per minute, but uh, I didn't necessarily think he was that big of a factor. And you start to watch the Origin games and you think, okay, maybe Varus does a ridiculous amount of damage and he plays a lot of Varus. Their games go long, and as you go long, your DPM sometimes goes higher because you have um, bigger items built than constantly be watching games and using the examples from the games and know how to interpret the games to do analytical content. This is by far the most important thing, which is why a lot of content creators start with the idea from the game and then look at the data first. So 
just the, the general phrasing of the argument, it's clear that they come up with the idea and then look for data to support it. Of course they do. Like that's, that's of course, right? And that's, that's absolutely true. Um, so I don't necessarily think that that in and of itself is a bad thing. And you might think it's confirmation bias just because maybe the counterpoints aren't addressed as quick, as deeply as you would like or as rigorously as you would like. And that's, that's a valid argument again. But like I said, a lot of times you can talk to the, to the content creator and ask them about these counterpoints. The biggest thing I think that makes people think that uh, people are being confirmation biased is the fact that things people tend to write articles about are things that people don't already know. Uh, for example, if I believed that Team Solo Mid could beat SK Telecom T1 in a best of five, I would write an article about it. I would discuss the stylistic differences between SK Telecom T1 and Team Solo Mid, and I would discuss where Team Solo Mid have advantages that SK Telecom don't have. And this would be the main way in which I would construct this argument and where I would look at it. I would discuss some of SK Telecom's strengths and ways in which that they could overcome Team Solo Mid and why Team Sol SK Telecom are a good team to a lesser extent. Because people already know and understand fully why, well, they don't understand fully, but they already know that SK Telecom are a very strong team, and they understand certain points about why SK Telecom are a very strong team. You don't have to tell them things they already know, right? You're going to make the argument that Team Solo Mid are um, strong in certain areas and can beat SK Telecom in certain areas. You're not going to say that, oh gosh, you know, SK Telecom are just good at this, this, and this, and make your entire article about why SK Telecom are amazing, right? Um, I think that this is something that people don't necessarily realize. It's that content creators aren't doing this to necessarily be edgy either. It's just that the most valuable content from my perspective, the stuff that I really look forward to and latch onto and like to read is stuff that is telling me something I haven't already thought about, that I can't just go on Reddit and see people commenting on 10 million times and, and discussing. Things that I really enjoy are, are points that I, I haven't heard. Uh, you can make a great argument on why, a great article on why SK Telecom T1 are the best team in the world. You can, I really think that but you have to, to introduce people to new ideas. You have to say that they're actually good because of what they do in, with the minions in this particular point in here, and not necessarily because of the arguments that a lot of people heard, which are their dragon control, all these other aspects. So this is my big issue, is that your favorite content creators aren't trying to be edgy when they introduce ideas that you haven't necessarily heard before or argue things that you haven't necessarily heard before. They're, they're just trying to make you look at something differently. And you might not necessarily agree or disagree, but as long as they make a persuasive argument and they use some evidence, either statistical or from in-game observations to back up their argument, I think they're writing a good article. And it's not necessarily going to be a confirmation bias article just because it isn't something that you don't necessarily agree with or because they haven't addressed every single counterpoint. Like there is there is a, a, such a thing as an opinion piece or a persuasive argument in which you're trying to to argue a side of the story, right? You're not arguing fully the entire side of the art. So still be a great article. For example, if I think SK Telecom T1 will still beat Team Solo mid, I can write an article about how TMSM could theoretically beat SK Telecom. And this is arguing one side of the story. Right? I would probably preface that because I'm never going to write something that I don't personally believe without prefacing it and saying that this is a theoretical uh, argument as to how TSM could beat SKT. Um, but that's, that's I think I've, I've gone over this enough and I've and pounded this in pretty well, but I just wanted to, to come up with and address the specific sentiment that I've seen a lot because I really don't think uh, people's favorite content creators are just going around confirmation, being confirmation biased about everything. Uh, League of Emily, I know, doesn't do that. Uh, Empire, when he used to do analytical content, doesn't do that. Tim doesn't do that. A lot of these content creators you know don't really do that. So um, thanks, and I hope this video was, was useful or interesting in some way, and uh, have a nice day. I'll probably make at least another one like this, but we'll see.